this is a tournament journal blog for the AJGA Patrick Reed Championship. That's not the right name, but that's what it is. The Patrick Reed AJGA. Um, pretty big tournament, um, but your boy won. So, I know what you're thinking, and you're saying to yourself, Matt, explain to us, how would you win after going on a losing streak for 20 years? How did you do it? And I will tell you, I'm not 100% sure, but I will tell you what I did good, what I can do to improve, and what I should have done to win by 15 or 20. Because I really could have, which is the worst part about it all. But let's kind of go over the let's go over the pros first, right? So we'll do a little let's do a little pros cons. Uh, first of all, let me give you a little bit of info about the tournament. Patrick Reed, AJGA, semi big AJ, not super big, not super small, but pretty good tournament with a good field, including a lot of good 2025s. Um, it's at the Woodlands TPC, the Woodlands Country Club, at the tournament course, which is a great golf course that hosts the Insperity Invitational for the Champions Tour every year here in Houston. And I shot 72, 73. 68. I think the par. I think the par was 71. So yeah, 72 or 71, 72, 68, something like that, right? I finished at three, 200 for the tournament. My bad. Finished at 200 for the tournament. One by three. Second place was one over par. Um, so that's a little bit of quick facts there. Um, Patrick Reed was at the tournament. That was very cool. So let's let's start going into the pros and cons, right? So we'll go over the pros first. So pros. I putted pretty good, right? I putted how I'm supposed to putt. I wouldn't say I putted the lights out. I wouldn't say I putted horribly. I felt like I putted good. I made a couple putts here and there, but overall I had really good speed and only had one only had one three putt for the entire tournament, which is great, right? For three days. Um, so in saying that, that's a pro. Putting was a lot better than it has been for Colorado Springs and the Byron Nelson. A lot better. Fixed up a lot of errors. Not a lot of terrain changes because we're in Houston, so it's a little bit easier to read the greens for me. And I was able to see my lines and hit my lines and have great speed for the whole tournament, and it worked out pretty well, right? So, number one, putting was good. Number two, I drove the ball fairly well. I don't want to say I drove the ball great, but I did hit a lot of fairways. The course isn't super tight, so driving is not really big factor, but I do, I will say that I did drive the ball pretty well. Um, I was in the fairway a lot, and if I wasn't, I didn't have any large misses that put me out of play like the Byron Nelson did, where I'd be behind any trees or pine straw or anything like that. I never had a miss that required me to, you know, play out into the open and then hit onto the green. I was all I always had a shot to the green, which is great for me because that's my strong suit is ball striking. And if, as long as you give me a shot to the green, I most likely will hit the green, right? And at that point, it's up to putting. So I feel like driving is a is a strong factor for my game. And I feel like if I have because I have a solid driving game, it, that will give me approaches. That will give me chances to approach the green with my my second shot or third shot, whichever. To par five or uh, uh, par three does it for me, but I have a good chance of hitting it and having a putt to score, right? So very vital. So I, I drove the ball fairly well, and that does include my three wood. There was a lot of three woods hit on all three days of that tournament, 
and I pretty much kept it on a string except for two golf shots on, and they were both actually on the last day on the one, two, three, fourth hole of the day, and the next to last hole of the day, 17. And both of them ended up in somewhat okay positions. One of them I missed the green because I was under the tree on the right, and I couldn't stop the ball on the green. And the other one almost rolled into the pond. It was about that far, but you know, we thank God for that one because the tournament would have been maybe over, right? So, drove the ball very well, fairly well, and I felt like I actually struck the ball s decent. It's not the best that I can strike the ball, but I felt like I did strike it well enough to be on the green and have a putt. I do feel like on days that I am striking the ball well, I can, I can basically... If the pin is accessible and it's not tucked or in a bad spot and I have a decent number with a good lie, I can, I can be within 15 feet of hole easily. That's where my ball striking is good. If my ball striking is on point like that, then I can, I can I have so much confidence in it that I can guarantee as long as I'm inside 170, um, it's, it's within 15 feet. And that is, that is true. If you ever go find a day where I'm striking the ball really well, that is what happens. Even if I'm 185 away, it'll be within 10 or 15 feet, which is kind of scary. But those days only happen sometimes. So I felt like it, it was fairly decent throughout the week. There's a couple bugs that I wanted to, to work on. Um, but good enough to win. Right? So I felt like a healthy balance between all three of these things, as well as I did start working a little bit more on my nutrition and hydration. At Houston, it was so hot and humid that you really couldn't without you know, dying. So I kept at least five liters of water in me throughout the tournament, as well as you know, continuously eating every three holes, which is something that I would kind of slack on for a little bit, and now I'm, I'm back doing rock solid. And I felt like that's really actually seen a uh, performance boost in my, in my game just by, you know, drinking more water and making sure I'm not hungry. Which is pretty interesting, right? And I felt like I did the best of staying on schedule with it in this tournament out of ever, out of every tournament that I've ever played. And I got a great result, so I want to, I want to, I want to take some of the credit from my win and put it into that and plug Elite Training Academy and Andy Chadwick for you know, helping me out and finding a good amount of food that I can eat and the right foods you know, to keep me energized and hydrated throughout the tournament. Um, so yes, that had me win by three strokes. I am now fully exempt for AJGA as well as you know I have the bag something that's really cool that I will post out on Instagram soon enough I got a Patrick Reed custom putter um, that he worked on with Grindworks and uh, customed it customized it customized it specifically for the winners of the tournament and it will be something that will be going into my bag hopefully at the end of this season but I feel like that was the, cool, the coolest achievement of the tournament was obviously, yes, being able to break the winning stretch and, you know, be fully exempt for AJ, which is wonderful, but just me personally being a kid, I really like the putter, so that, I'm going to attribute all my hard work and effort into getting the putter, which I didn't even know I'd be getting until after the tournament. Um, great golf course. I love, I love the conditions of it. Um, layout is, is very nice. I felt like it was wide enough, and, but not, I felt like it was just wide enough for me to be able to keep the ball in play and I had a really good tempo. And the fact that Coach Brad was there to help me throughout the entire, throughout the entire three days, uh, I felt like I never really had to deal with anything too technically wrong other than me being able to just, you know, keep the big parts of my body moving as well as keeping my tempo in check. So I really appreciate that and there's, he's definitely, He's definitely one of the reasons that I was able to make do that week with uh, my tournament. So yeah, that's pretty much the video. I do have um, 
the North South Junior Amateur next week in Pinehurst, and we'll be able to play number eight and number two, which is going to be super cool. I've never played in North Carolina, so I'll be kind of interested to see how golf kind of works out, how the greens are, the elevation changes, if there's elevation changes, and occasionally hitting out of a waste area, which sounds not fun to me, but I'm sure I'll have to do it at some point, especially on number two, right? So, that's pretty much the video. If you like this video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to Matt Poly Golf down below, as well as turn on your notifications, so when I do upload, you guys will never miss a video. Peace.